this film gives a glimpse into what life was like in Ukraine in the first half of the 20th century. By no means does it provide a profound historic analysis of how the state of Ukraine came into existence, especially considering that it is impossible to capture this in just a few sentences. What can be summarized is that the emergence of Ukraine was the direct result of the Russian Revolution in 1917, which led to the formation of the People's Republic of Ukraine. This was followed by a four-year struggle for independence that ended with the formation of the Soviet Union in 1922. In 1921, the east of Ukraine fell into the hands of the Russian Red Army. And in 1922, Ukraine became the Ukrainian Socialist Soviet Republic. The Soviet Union stretched from the Baltic Sea in the west to the Sea of Japan in the east and from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Black Sea and Caspian Sea in the south, covering an area of about four times the size of the United States. Many peoples were part of the Soviet Union. In the southwest, the inhabitants of Little Russia, otherwise called Ukrainians. the Moldovans and Bessarabians in Moldavia. Slightly more to the east, the Armenians and the Georgians, the English, the Cherkas, the Caucasians in the mountainous territory. Further east, the Uzbeks and Turkmen, the Kyrgyzians, in the southeast, the Mongolians who border China, Bashkirs and Turko Tatarians in the south, Uryaks, the Yakus in the north, far behind the Ural Mountains, people from the ice regions like Seng hunters, nomads like the people from Lapland and not to forget the Cossacks that live in the central part of Ukraine. Furthermore, people that live in the large cities like St. Petersburg and Moscow, where the old civilization meets the new. And for example, the Troika has to compete with the motor car. All over the Ukraine and in the USSR, people go about their daily lives, either as factory workers, soldiers, masons, policemen, sailors, metal workers, school children, farmers, nurses, engineers, window cleaners, salespeople, housewives or post office employees, radio commentators or stewardesses, scientists or typists, musicians, or ballet dancers. Whatever their profession and daily occupation, all they have in common is the love for their place of birth. Ukraine is a country that is rich in natural resources. In the mountains are rich gold and silver veins. Other metals like copper, tin, manganese, 
nickel, chromium and radium are plentiful in underground mines. Ukraine was and is an important supplier of wood and coal. Natural gas and oil are also important contributors to the economy. As well as iron and steel. But Ukraine's most important role is to serve as a major source of food for the whole world. Its vast plains are extremely fertile and thus millions of farmers produce wheat, sunflower oil and other agricultural produce. Cotton is another commodity of Ukraine, as well as some tobacco, although on a small scale. Sugar is also produced and exported. But the most important produce is wheat. The fields of wheat extend as far as the eye can reach. Already in the 1930s, Ukraine was the breadbasket for Russia and many other parts of the world. In all, Ukraine has supplied around 10% of the world's best quality wheat. Not only wheat is produced, but also oats, rye, hops and much more. Under the Soviet Union, Ukraine experienced many turbulent periods. World War I was almost immediately followed by the Polish-Ukrainian War that lasted from November 1918 till July 1919. In this period, cities like Lviv fell under Polish rule. After Joseph Stalin came to power following Lenin's death in 1924, Ukraine underwent important industrial developments. From 1932 to 1933, a terrible man-made famine called the Holomodor caused between 5 and 10 million Ukrainians, one-fifth of all Ukrainian farmers, to die of starvation. It was the result of a forced collectivization of agricultural companies. In 1939, also the western part of Ukraine came under Soviet control. Two years later, in 1941, the Germans started their attacks on the Soviet Union. They proceeded to persecute the Jews to large scale and the recruitment of Ostarbeider to work in German factories. Ukraine lost a sixth of its population. After World War II, from 1945 onwards, Ukraine developed into one of the most important and prosperous Soviet socialist republics. To close off this brief impression of Ukraine in the first half of the 20th century, it's worth observing that in 1954, during the reign of Stalin's successor Nikita Khrushchev, the Crimea was handed over to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic as a gesture of friendship between the Russian and Ukrainian peoples. This film is only submitted for informational historic purposes and not intended to enable discussion of the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine.